And with Sonia, we have a Swiss on my on the sofa of Empodera, um, who's global by definition, but loves the local. So, Sonia, thank you very much for coming here from Geneva, here, and um, let's go, let's deep dive into drones, AI, people, please. People. And, um, and how, how organizations change, can do so much change. Thank Sonia, you. Thank thanks you, a lot. Um, my first question to Sonia is like, so okay, we have seen this. Oh no, we want to see the video first. Yes. Sorry. A video brief introduction in the work of, of We Robotics. What is power of local? What is the power of local? What is the power of local? It is recognizing that power is not evenly distributed between the global north and the global south. Cuando otro llega la tecnología, podemos garantizar que una solución vaya a ser sostenible y genere impacto. The power of local is about returning power to us. Expertos locales con conocimiento relevante of the type of problem that impacts our community. We know and understand better than anyone. Ngir mana andi ay safara si jafe jafe yi ndax ñoo koy dundu bëss bu nekk. Power of local is a network that invests in our local community and gives us relevant skills and give them access to high quality technology to solve our own challenges. Locally, we use drones data and artificial intelligence to tackle these challenges. We train talented and creative youth who are our future problem solvers. They use aerial imagery and data for more effective urban planning to keep up with issues such as population growth. We inspire girls and boys to pursue a career in the robot. We support local families and thus are managing their crops. Enseñar a picar en lugar de darles el picado. We empower young professionals with robotic skills and jobs that makes the difference. In the communities we live in. Again, we also found on this. In the places we call home. We need a revolution towards creating a better future for everyone with the help of robotics. It's not about the robots. Technology itself will not bring change for the future. We are the ones who can engage inspire and lead our humans. We are changing the world to become more informed, more equal, more inclusive. When I think about the words flying labs, legal buttons and the form of local, what comes to mind is development. It's partnership. Impact. Evolution. Integration. Collaboration. Empowerment. Succeed. This is the power of local. This is the power of local. This is the power of this is the power of local. Sonia, Sonia, when you see that video, what do you feel? I always get very emotional. Why? Because Why? it's my colleagues, because I know all of them and I know what they do. I know the change they make in their communities and I know where they come from. Mm. You know, it's, uh, see, it makes me very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it really, wow. it, it's, it fills me with a lot of joy because, you know, it's, it's, when we started working, or when we start working with Flying Labs, the power of local, it's about redefining expertise. When you work in robotics, drones, drone data, AI, geospatial information, you know, when you ask what is expertise, uh, most people who get the expertise, which is governments, local governments, local organizations, international organizations, they think expertise comes from the north. Hmm. So, Someone from the country cannot be the expert. First world, second, third world. Exactly. We have heard these terms. But exactly. What is the reality? Exactly. It's because, but it's not true. And it's not true that local experts don't exist. They do exist, but they don't have a platform. They don't have a way to get access. 
access to technology, access to knowledge on how to best use it, access to opportunities. I think access that's for me, brand. yeah, so it's a lot, the power for us is a lot about actually agency decide themselves how they use the technology, uh, who gets to use it, how is it applied, where is it applied? I think these decisions, you know, I think what I heard yesterday and today, it's the world of technology, it's a lot of top-down. Someone decides in Silicon Valley to create a software to use drone data. They have a lot of power. Uh, we want to change that. We want to say local experts and local communities get to say how to use it, when to use it, they get to control the data, and it's for them then to say, do we share, how do we share, is this open? Is this just for the community? It's not for someone thousands of miles away to decide. And that's what we really want to do. <coughs> this is empodera, em empowerment, right? It's, exactly. uh, it's all about empowerment. So this, this uh, discussion and learning, you getting to know you in these last few days was super enriching. I hope you ever, everybody has grabbed this grand, big opportunity to get in touch with with the speakers of their projects and so on. And I had the pleasure to, to understand a little bit more about Flying Labs. And I want to bring this today to you. What means empowerment? What means organization? How organization can just work differently? You know? And how these difference can make such a huge impact, like Flying Labs. So let's, um, let's start with a simple question. So how, how does your day look like? Where are you? Where, where are you based right now? What is your, you know, you wake up, you do some yoga stuff. Exactly. In the morning, then you have Getting breakfast. Getting ready. What happens next? What happens when your day starts? Well, mostly it starts in the east, mm -hmm. because uh, the Flying Labs Network is anywhere from Asia or even the Pacific, all the way to Latin America. So my day mostly starts in the east. Uh, I uh, am lucky enough to spend at least half of my day with Flying Labs talking uh, in video conferences, video calls with my colleagues from Flying Labs. So normally it starts in Asia somewhere, goes quite quickly to Africa, and then at the end of the day it ends somewhere in Latin America. Where's the drone flying? Are you drone flying no. somewhere in the middle? No. no, I don't really fly drones. And I don't really travel much neither. A lot of, you know, I met a lot of people here and got to say, oh, you get to travel a lot. But the goal is for us not to travel. The goal is for local oh, experts to do what they do and international experts. What we can do, we can support. And mm -hmm. I can support with a video call. I don't have to travel. That's kind of the goal behind it, is give mm. the space to the local experts, give the, give the visibility and the agency to mm. the local experts. And when they need something, they can tell us what they need. And that's our role as a global organization, to support them with whatever they need. Wonderful. Explain, in short, what is the difference between we we robotics and flying labs. What is the connection between both? So we uh, chose on purpose from the very beginning on to have two very different brands because we don't want them to be we robotics labs. They're their own thing. So a flying lab is a local knowledge hub that is kind of the train the trainer that has the ability to train locally on these technologies, on, on the use and the application of these technologies uh, very much on a very local level local communities who have a flood in their community. How can they get empowered with data to take better decisions? Uh, STEM for youth uh, on a very local level. So it's really for them to drive that and they do a lot of training, they'll do a lot of capacity strengthening of government officials, of local NGOs, of local research centers, of schools. So it's really their kind of work and our work for V-Robotics is really to facilitate the network uh, and to create partnerships with technology companies, with international organizations, to create mm. opportunities. So we see ourselves as the facilitators. Mm -hmm. The ones kind of, I always like to say, it's if you look at the canvas, the flying labs are the stars, and we're just the canvas where they kind of can stick to. And we also, so this network is a lot about sharing and collaboration. Mm -hmm. And yeah. while, you know, like, share, everybody wants to share, but yeah. everyone has a really busy day. I think in many ways, it's not that people don't want to share, it's, that it's not always easy. So what we do is help with sharing, 
have some formats, uh, have team members that help flying apps with sharing their stories within the network, outside of the network, telling their stories. So we have a whole team of storytellers who helps them to tell their stories. Because it's about changing mindsets. Mm -hmm. it's about we changing have a flying neighbor I here know. as well. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, this uh, fly is very into <laughs> drone flying, maybe. Um, talking about, you know, when you mentioned there's 40 countries already. It's not a small organization. So, you know, how, what is finance? Or how do you finance? How, how does it work that, that you can have this impact? We will later go into what is the impact real, the real impact of, of our flying labs. But how do you finance yourself? How do you so how the, the set up? The flying labs finance themselves uh, through the services they provide. Mm -hmm. So through the trainings, through pilot projects, and it's on a local level. And that's mm -hmm. how it should be, because that's how it is sustainable. They are addressing a local market. They have a local expertise to do that. Uh, so and we finance ourselves uh, a good part through in-kind, a lot of in-kind technology, in-kind uh, training, in-kind certifications given by our partners, mm -hmm. uh, um, a bit part of philanthropy, and a bit of consulting also. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, we, we talked about the decentralization. What is empowerment at Flying Labs? What, what do you, how do you control, like how is it growing? You, you said it's a flat organization, you are doing this stuff. So what is, you know, how do you control the partners? What is the dynamics? Maybe people here in our audience also have organizations. So what is the difference between top down and like the organization you are running and why it's so successful? I think, you know, like you use a word that I don't really like that much. Oh, which one? Control. Empowerment? Control. Oh, control. Because I think when we started this, you know, we, we had to take the decision that we will give up control and replace control by trust. I think it's very trust based. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, so two facts. Uh, the network is based on a social franchise, so there's a, there's a frame, and as long as you move in the, within that frame as a flying lab, that's okay. There's a lot of space. So it is a lot of agency and local decision making, and that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. But with that comes also responsibility to the network, because that was the fear of the network. So it grew from four flying labs in 2018 when we implemented that model to 40 today. And about halfway through the process, when you had 20 flying labs, flying labs started understanding that it's a, it's a global brand and it gives them a lot of power and a lot of visibility. But with that, it's saying if your colleague in Madagascar is doing something bad, you in Peru will have a problem because it's a global brand. So it is about joint mm -hmm. responsibility. So the network asked for a governance model. And so we came up with the network we have a governance model with criteria. It's measured every year. And this is how everyone contributes to a joint governance. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I think, showing up. So that I'm like an eternal positive person. So I always think, you know, like you need to look at the good side. That's why I don't like control, because it's the thing to say, if as a flying lab, you see the value of being part of the network and what it can do and the impact it create, you will do everything you can to mm -hmm. add to it. And you will not take away from it. And through that model, some do not share. And then if you don't share, then you're not the right organization and your license will not be renewed. And right. you will leave the network. I love this renewal concept uh, you told me about because uh, running a network, decentralized network with empowered people and on trust, basically on it trust. On and trust. this control, but not pure. The top-down control. No, it's the network. The, the network control, which is peer-to-peer -peer control. Exactly. So super important, and um, and I I absolutely took this with me from this conference as well for my own network stuff I'm doing, and um, so let's talk about the projects. Give us uh, and the audience a glimpse of you know what kind of projects are we talking about? What is apart from the organization? What are the actual work yeah. that Flying Labs do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's anything that is tied to an SDG. 
which for Africa, Latin America, Asia is like 80% of what's going on. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of opportunity there. And it really can go from, you know, Guillaume, yesterday you talked about using drones for disasters, so that's part of the work. Uh, agriculture, conservation, climate. Uh, um, drones are an amazing tool to also create evidence. So a lot of flying labs work with local communities to create evidence for, for example, illegal logging illegal mining, illegal dumping. So to create visual evidence mm. of what's going on. And that's why I fell in love with drones, because it's an amazing tool that allows to create your own data. And mm. if you look at geospatial data, it's mostly in the hands of governments. It's mostly and in the Elon hands Musk. Exactly, of a lot of people who like control, where drones give communities the ability to create their own data. Mm. And that's why I really fell in love with the technology itself, but it's not about the technology. Because again, you can do a lot of harm with drones, but if you're a local expert and you live in the community, you're it's safe. your community. It's, you want to create positive impact in your community. You will use the drone in the right way. You will engage with communities before. If you're an international expert who extracts data from a community, you fly in, you do your thing, you fly out, possibly mm. you create more harm. Well, that's why the idea of local expertise, or oh, Jorge is on the yeah. yeah, so that, uh, the local expertise really is, I think, coupling technologies with local experts is really the way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's local power. I've seen some videos. I, get, I really, yeah, I think, empodera these days what, what you have seen here on stage, on the sofa, and on the screens. This is the opening door to discover what are behind so all those projects. So really, you know, download, tour, you know, <laughs> install it, use it to make a difference every day. We talked about that. Flying Labs, uh, open the door to YouTube, go on the YouTube channel and get inspired by the voices from the community yes. and, and see what, what's happening on the ground and then you feel, Wow, I was with Sonia on the sofa at, in Malaga, you know, and it feels very, very good, and you get connected. So, Jorge, uh, preguntas. <laughs> Now it's your opportunity. I, I have one. Can I have a? Si, sí? yeah, yeah. no, for the public. For the public. Eh, 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 Jorge. No, 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 no. Speaker first. I for have the a, public. For can the I, audience. Can I ask a question to the public? No. Yolanda, oh. Yolanda, Yolanda, venga. Can I, venga. can I ask one to the public? Go, go I, for it. I, I would really... Oh. Un momento, un momento. Para la respuesta, para la respuesta de son. We're, we're breaking the cycle here, so. I, I, I would love to hear from the public uh, if in your work, uh, if you have thought about the power of local, and if you have thought about not the technology, but the power of who gets to use it, and how does that look like? Jorge, now you, you, you are allowed. <laughs> we break the rule. Exactly. Hi, I think that you're doing a really wonderful job. The only concern I have in, uh, in what I see happening in the world is that many of these uh, Western societies uh, produce a lot of uh, you know, I have sometimes the impression, for example, smart cities, because the air is so polluted or the water is so polluted. So they try to solve the problems with technology, which is not the actual way of how to solve the problems. And it seems to me they're creating uh, the problems only for them to be able to sell us more robots and drones and all these sorts of things which is like uh, the end of the selling, uh, let's say, uh, agenda of high-tech companies. So how, would you, how do you address or think or whatever in this context? Because I think uh, on the other side, it's really wonderful and we know that technology is doing things. But on the other side, we are trying to address problems of holistic nature, much more philosophical in nature even. Uh, then by just uh, putting the drone somewhere, I right? Think that the question is, is clear. Thanks, Sonia. Yes. Can you? Very, very clear question. And actually, the answer is the how. You know, if you do that top down, deciding somewhere in New York or deciding somewhere in Geneva, this is where you have the problem. 
if you let local communities decide what is the value, do they need technology to solve that, yes or no? If you have drone data, will it contribute to a better decision? Once out of three, the, the answer will be yes, and two out of three, the answer will be no. But that decision needs to be made at the local level and not at the global level. And I think this is how you circumvent that, is by starting at the bottom. Hi, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you for your talk, really interesting. I have two very uh, specific questions. First one, I imagine the challenges of, for example, maintenance of the drones and, uh, and uh, let's say, the day-to-day -day kind of um, making the, 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 the whole work sustainable is very difficult because the, the production of the drones, the pieces, and all this kind of stuff could be not localized in the places where the communities are. So my question would be, how do you overcome these challenges? How do you address this, this dichotomy that probably happens? <laughs> and the second question would be, um, how do you find the communities? How do the communities um, come to you? Or is it that um, you search for them? Just these two questions. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. So I'll do the second one first. They find us. So it's not us finding them, it's really word to mouth. It is the network is built on a social franchise model where existing local organizations, and they can be non-profits, for-profits, universities who join, but they find us. And it's a lot of word to mouth. And now with 40 flying labs, it's actually a lot of flying labs to flying labs. The latest one who came on is Botswana, and it is their colleagues from Zimbabwe who brought them in. So it's really a lot of uh, countries talking to each other. And it actually brings to the second question is, so a flying lab is a knowledge hub, but they also create ecosystems in their countries. And the ecosystem includes repair, it includes addressing everything that goes around, it includes things like regulations, it includes uh, even elements like insurance. It, there's a lot of things that are not in place. So for this to be sustainable, uh, you need an ecosystem in the country. So on the V-Robotics side, we build a global ecosystem with partners, and Flying Labs repeat the same thing in their country with a local ecosystem that then brings in all these different pieces and they do a lot of advocacy work, they work a lot with regulators to make, to help adapt regulations in a better way. So it's, it's not, an, you know, like possibly replying even to the question before is, we did a small study with Flying Labs two years ago to look at how do they spend their time. And it's about 10% with flying drones and it's about a good 45% with data and anything that is related to training and these elements, and it's 45% of community engagement, advocacy, that is the biggest part of the work. Mm. Incredible, and there's one, uh, okay, go, go ahead, go ahead. Hi, Sonia, well, thank you for such an inspirational uh, sharing with we all of us. We did a good job. Um, I guess, to me, this is the way to go, uh, empower people, give power to the people. Um, but of course, that is probably when you lose the control is when you're giving power to the people. Um, it's not what we normally see, uh, but what has been the main challenge um, for them like, that you have seen in these communities when you actually create this environment? Because this is not the normal thing to, to do or to operate from. So, what has been something that you've seen that is like, wow, when I did this, this happened, and there's still some challenges with working with them? Right, thank you. I think mean, some key main challenges for them uh, in their work, but also within the network, is really the mindset shift. You know, it's, I think, especially in a lot of uh, cultures, uh, they're very top-down cultures also in their culture, so to have a movement that is very bottom-up is very new for many of them and it really needs time to also get into it. And the key main challenge I think that uh, all flying labs face, that we face too, is really the mindset. The mindset around local expertise. So what we've, what we've done the last uh, one and a half year, and it was uh, by demand of flying labs, is really to invest more in storytelling. And so we have hired a, a visual storyteller, we have hired someone who writes stories, who helps because they're, they're experts, so they're, they're mostly engineers, they're not really good at storytelling. So what we help them to do is to tell their stories because they face so much 
mindset kind of barrier in their own countries in many ways, that this is a challenge where they have to work every day. And then about, so at V-Robotics, 80% of our team is, is women. Uh, in the flying labs, about uh, 25, 26% are women. And in many cultures, it just gets worse. So, you know, you're a local expert. Let's say you're a local expert in Uganda. It's really difficult to engage with your ministries because they say like, well, an expert in drones and data and AI cannot come from, from Uganda. It must be someone who comes from the north. And then on top of that, if you're a woman, it makes it very, very difficult. So it's really, uh, and that's where the network is very helpful because it gives you a space to talk to other colleagues and to learn from others how they are overcoming the same challenges and what solutions they have found to them. One, one last question. Or, uh, uh, okay. The, uh, I'm watching Jorge because he's close by. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sonia. We had a chance to talk earlier, and uh, I, I just want to applaud the initiative again, even you know, in, in public now, just not between the two of us. Um, with the Internet Society, as, as we mentioned, we have local chapters as well, so I very much, uh, we very much function in the same way where the chapters are, in our case, volunteers, and so they, uh, they have the same, not the same box, but a box as well in which they can, uh, they can operate and, and they do their own things and it works marvelous. The training we, t we showed earlier in Kenya, our Mali chapter saw, saw the story and said we wanted the same, they replicated, we gave them the content and off they went and they were extremely successful, so it does work. So for somebody uh, in here who actually wants to replicate, it does work. Um, I do have one question, though. Uh, apart from the fact that we should have a conversation about partnering, which you know would be a nice takeaway from the conference, but when you talk about flying labs, do you see lots of things happening in the capital cities, and how do you go to the rural areas? Do you replicate the flying labs in rural areas, or do you, or I would say, do they centralize the, the trainings, and then they go into the rural areas for the implementations? I was just curious how that works. It's actually both. So some of them are, are based in the, the key cities, but as flying labs is you really need to look at this kind of a virtual hub. Uh, they have members and a lot of the members are also in secondary cities or in, in, in more the rural areas. And actually most of the work happens in rural areas because they will work with uh, regional governments or communities in the rural areas. But it's again, it's so much easier to do that in your country because at least it's possibly going to be the same language, not always, but sometimes it's the same language. And then it's countries like, you know, comparing a country, let's say like, uh, like uh, Kenya to a country like India, which in India, India Flying Labs has 128 partners in the country. So India Flying Labs is made up of almost 128 partners in India because it's a continent by itself. So it's really for them then to adapt and to say which areas are the ones to work begin. It's for them to decide what they want to do, and it's for them then to choose their local partners also. No mm. problem. No, ya está, ¿no? <laughs> vale, voy, voy, voy a ir terminando, como me da a hacer el permiso. Vale, vale, vale. A ver, la última, la rápida, la rápida. ¿Cuál es el objetivo para este año, para el año que viene? ¿Cuál es tu, uh, sorry, what is your, your main goal for the next year? What do you want to achieve with Flying Labs? Ha, huh, good question. It's actually one of my uh, first dreams I had when we started this, and it looked very impossible seven years ago, but I think we're on the way. So my dream always has been to say, uh, the day we have enough Flying Labs and enough expertise, because everyone brings in the expertise because we share, how can we bundle this expertise and export it to the North? And this is, uh, and you know, it's like, it's, we're, so we're starting what we call a sector expertise hub, and we start with disaster management and disaster risk reduction, because it's, there's so much knowledge in the South. Because with climate change, they have been facing, like, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not the disasters you hear about. It's the flooding of a community of 4,000 people. It's a landslide that has, you know, uh, cut the roads, really important roads there. It's all these small things nobody will ever talk about. It's their daily lives. So they know how to manage disasters. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Who are you talking to? So, uh, uh, unfortunately, it was too early. So we got a call, um, I got a call four months ago from uh, an organization who sources for a European Union project 
for European countries to do disaster management because Let's face it, we have more and more disaster. Because Germany was voila. one of them. Exactly. Yep. And there's no expertise on how to do this on a very local level. So they called us and said, could you take on this project? And we can't because today we're not set up. But with creating this hub, that's really my dream to say, you know, I hope they come along again in a year. And then we said, yes, we can take on your projects and bring my colleagues from Nepal and from many African countries and from Latin America and help Europe learn how we can best deal with using technology for disasters. Isn't that a wonderful closing? Yes. Yes. Bringing the south to the north. Thanks a lot, Zanya. Thank you. Thank you.